Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to review American Gods Episode 5. And I believe the title is Lemon Scented. And guys, I have to say, uh, so far throughout the series, this has been my favorite episode. And um, just the pacing of it, we got introduced to uh, some more of the new gods, you know, as well as um, had some dealings with the old gods. And probably, and, and in the introduction, we actually got introduced to some of the some of the first gods uh, to come on the scene. And um, we basically got this very interesting uh, animation. Uh, I thought the CGI was well done. And it takes place uh, with the early uh, first uh, migration to America over the Bering Strait. And... Uh, we got introduced to this mammoth god that these Native Americans uh, worshipped early on and tell this very interesting story about uh, how the mammoth god loved his people so much that he was willing to sacrifice himself so that they can progress uh, through their, through their uh, trip across the Bering Strait dealing with harsh conditions and extreme cold and then we get kind of this introduction of the buffalo god we've seen throughout the series throughout some of shadows uh visions in the bone orchard orchards rather but uh what was very interesting was uh some of the uh or the one line that talked about how powerful the gods were but that people were more uh more powerful and uh, kind of takes us back to how the gods need people as much as people need the gods. Uh, these gods throughout this series uh, feed off belief. They need belief and when they're forgotten, we got to see this uh, original mammoth god get forgotten and then replaced with this buffalo god. And uh, that uh, introduction, uh, introductory scene I thought was excellent. It was great animation. I thought it was well done. And um, I like the approach they took, giving us a, a, a different uh, uh, style of visuals, you know, uh, besides uh, live action uh, sequences about, you know, explaining how the uh, older gods were introduced to the Americas and how they were brought, brought about by various cultures but moving on and getting past that uh, what was just so very interesting was we got to pick up on what was going on with Laura Moon and Shadow was they dealt with the uh, issues that they were left with uh, that were left uh, going on to death never to be uh, resolved but uh they get this second chance with laura moon returning from the leprechaun leprechaun's coin and shadow and both uh, laura get to kind of resolve their issues but kind of like one of my predictions i had made last week and that was that i don't think shadow was going to be in the same place as laura laura's changed a lot after her death she seems to be uh, her her entire um, uh, purpose, uh, and I, I can't really say life because she's dead now, but her purpose, <laughs> you know, at this point seems to resolve things with Shadow to help Shadow understand that she really does love him at this stage. And uh, Shadow, uh, he's still moving about uh, like... Uh, he's in this he's in this situation now where he can believe everything that has happened like nothing surprises him but at the same time he doesn't believe anything is real so he's in a very strange place where nothing surprises him you know like I had said in some earlier uh, uh, reviews that uh, Shadow is just moving through this entire series like he's in this state of non-reality and um, when uh 
he's faced with certain situations or he witnesses certain things, uh, I don't think Shadow ever really identifies it with reality. You know, his his reaction to it, just his entire, uh, 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 you know, uh, how he uh, identifies with the entire situation, it just uh, doesn't seem real in both the character and the scene. So to me, Shadow is kind of in this trance-like state. And even when he's dealing with Laura on their first encounter uh, after her, after she's back from the dead, uh, it's almost like he's still in that state. And it doesn't even really shake him that she's back from the dead. He's more concerned about uh, the problems they had, much like when she was alive, or he's looking at the situation uh, dealing with her infidelity, like she's still alive. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, just very, uh, 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 you know, strange to see the, how he reacts. But at the same time, I think it kind of makes sense because I don't think he's ever really had a chance to get out of shock. You know, it's just been a constant. His entire life from this point has been just one uh, strange happening after the after the next unbelievable happening after the next so he hasn't really had a chance to slow down but um, you know Laura still we get to see in this state where she's just acting like it's fun you know like uh, she's expecting him to basically still see things the same start back where they left off and Shadow is not really in that place. There's too much crazy things have happened. Uh, he can't really focus on that. Uh, you know, he basically reveals to her that he is no longer her puppy. You know, going back to the lost puppy dog. Following her like a puppy, uh, you know, ideal. And how she's always seen him in the relationship. But all those things have seemingly changed in her in her mind as, she, as she's you know telling him she's basically still treating him like the same person she saw him as before she left you know her revelation that she loves him hasn't really changed her perception of where he is in that relationship and he basically does let her know that he's no longer that person in that relationship and I can we can kind of see that this has does have some type of impact on Laura. Uh, but I think in Laura's mind, uh, she still sees Shatter as her husband. He's still her guy. And she still believes that they're going to make some you know, headway in that relationship and get things back on track. Whereas Shadow is still dealing with all these various things with Mr. Wednesday and the guys, the old guys versus the new guys. But I, I want to say something, um, uh, make a... A very interesting point something that I meant to say several reviews ago but I just kind of uh, missed the point but also as I've kind of looked at some other reviews and information I haven't seen this addressed and uh, and that is you know one of my theories and I'm talking specifically now to when Mr. Wednesday visits the shadow uh, at the hotel room when he's having his uh uh, his reunion with Laura and having their very emotional conversation uh, is that Mr. Wednesday is alerted by his ravens, uh, you know, that something is going on. They're trying to tell him something. Apparently, I believe they may witness uh, Shadow and Laura together, but they're letting them know something's going on strange. And uh, we know um, if we if you if you're familiar with any kind of Norse mythology, you know that. Odin uses these ravens as a communication uh, uh, relay communication from the ravens back to him. They will fly across the earth, let him know everything's going on, and 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 much they're pretty much doing the same thing now in this episode. But if we cut back to the first episode, um, you know when, uh, or I'm sorry, not the first, but actually it would be the episode that shows what happened with Laura when she actually uh started cheating on the um uh shadow with Robbie. Uh I have this theory that perhaps I'm I'm wondering now if Mr. Wednesday was some kind of way involved with uh 
uh, you know, Laura's, uh, the whole incident would happen with Laura and the cheating, and um, there is no evidence that uh, Mr. Wednesday had anything to do with it, with the exception of the Ravens being present to see what was going on with Laura Moon. But when I look at how bad Mr. Wednesday wanted Shadow and the interests of the new gods and Shadow, it wouldn't surprise me at all, and my mind's really leaning towards that it's possible that the entire incident with Laura cheating on Shadow, it could have been arranged uh, or, or, or kind of put into a series of events where she could be greatly influenced to take that step. And although she's troubled on her own, and I could see just the way her character is, uh, uh, you know, written, uh, I can see that Laura would need no uh, uh, help from the gods uh, in order to do the things that she did throughout the series. However, looking at the importance of Shadow, seemingly through the story so far, I could see there being a need to attempt to... Uh, keep Shadow focused on certain areas of his life and not being, uh, you know, led uh, or, not, or not, you know, losing focus uh, being with Laura. I could see Laura being someone that would keep him from whatever it is that the new gods and old gods want of Shadow. And apparently they want something because he's constantly being... Uh, 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 Solicited by both uh, uh, the new guys and the old guys. So I just found that very interesting. I think that's a theory we all need to pay attention to. That uh, certain things could have been put in motion. And for Shadow to, or rather Laura Moon to cheat. So Shadow could embark on the situation he's on now. And, uh, you know. We get this very interesting scene, and this is also what made this week's episode uh, one of my favorite. Is we got a, a lot more information uh, about h how the new gods work together. We we we've kind of had been introduced to some individually, got an idea, media, t uh, technology boy. We got an idea how they work individually, but in this episode, we get introduced to. Uh, how they work together, what their goals are, what they're trying to accomplish, and things like that. And we and we again get um, uh, media uh, merging into these various iconic characters. It was I love it was Lucio Ball before. Uh, this week we get David Bowie and uh, um, Marilyn Monroe and, and things like that. So she does a good job of uh, merging into these characters, and she's. Pers this personification of what we see on TV and what we see in the media. And she's, uh, you know, having this, she's kind of scolding te uh, Technology Boy. We can, uh, we can see just how she's doing that, that Technology Boy in this new pantheon of gods, these new gods that he's the youngest of the gods and he's the, the less wise of them. And so they're scolding him about, uh, you know, the people he's dealing with, with Mr. Wednesday and Shadow. He's being scolded basically because these are much older gods that uh, Mr. Wednesday is a much older god that deserves respect. And um, they're uh, basically letting us know their plans that they don't really want a war, but what they want to do is rebrand uh, you know, the old gods bring them into this new pantheon of gods, but bring them into it, whereas they're underlings in this new organization. And uh, right, just all very interesting. We get Mr. Rural uh, finally coming through, and Mr. Rural just seems to be this. Uh, I, I, he, he, he's the most powerful, apparently, of the new gods, the leader. And uh, um, his plan is to uh, basically bring everybody into this kind of neat little order. Uh, he wants to step everybody up. He wants uh, the old guys to do things a new way. He wants to recruit Mr. Wednesday. But he, Mr. Wednesday doesn't like how the new setup uh, of 
the new guys to the old guys is. They want to rebrand them, have this Odin missile as they're explaining, and uh, basically uh, updating him, upgrading him as media uh, alludes to. <laughs> and I just thought that was very funny. And of course, Shadow, with all this going on, he's very, you know he's just very. Uh, much again still in his dream state is this real as he's witnessing all these new guys and old guys merge together into this meeting and uh, trying to figure out where they're going to go from there and of course Mr. Wednesday is basically letting them know hey I'm never going to join you guys you know I'm like the irritation in the oyster shell uh, that makes the uh, that you know where that although uh, the pearl, this beautiful pearl is created. There's always some irritation in the process. And Mr. Wednesday, as you all know, he's that irritation. So, uh, you know, we can pretty much tell it's a matter of time before they go head to head. But uh, apparently they don't want to make martyrs out of it. They don't want uh, uh, this martyrdom to form with the old guys. And then they have this big war that apparently they're trying to avoid. But at the same time... We can tell that the new guys are very powerful by what they're demonstrating, that the old guys are very weak because they've been so much forgotten um, by the uh, everyone. And, the, and again, the people as uh, at the beginning of the review or, or in the beginning of the series as the animation explained, the introductory animation explained that it was that gods were powerful, but people were more powerful. So as the people forget the older guys, they become weaker, and the new guys are becoming stronger. So I just thought this was a great episode, guys. Uh, you know, who'd I miss? Max Sweeney, um, uh, Matt Sweeney. Uh, he tried to take his coin back from Laura. He failed tremendously. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't have the power to take it from Laura. Uh, <laughs> he has to. We find out that he has to. Uh, he, uh, the person who possesses the coin has to freely give it back to Mad Sweeney or the, or the Leprechaun. And, um, you know, I, I understand that uh, Laura Moon, Emily Browning's, uh, the character she plays has been getting a lot of neg negativity. And, uh, um, you know, um, but I, I just want to say that although her character is getting a lot of negativity, mean she's not doing a great job acting this character I mean she's if, if I have to be honest uh, her character is the most complicated most complex and well developed and that's and that's all very interesting because so far in the series that's all very interesting because as I understand it in the book American Gods her character wasn't a very big character um, have a, a, a uh, uh, a lot of story behind her character. She gets a lot in the TV series, but at the same time, I uh, you know I believe her character is the best acting. You know, and I think she's doing an excellent job. So everybody who's attacking the character of Laura Moon, I kind of view her kind of like Joffrey of Game of Thrones. Everybody hated Joffrey, but jo we we found out how important Joffrey was when he died and was removed from the show how important his character was <laughs> so i really loved this week's episode guys i think this was my favorite uh i didn't find myself uh, the pacing was good i didn't find myself kind of watching the clock like let's move on to the next scene i was very interested in everything i saw and we did get this weird tree like god at the end uh i mean when they were escaping from the police station and Seems like some kind of god of nature. Or seems like it would fit more in the old gods. But then at the same time, he's just kind of... I'm assuming that this god is not on anybody's side. You know, he's he's just doing his own thing, apparently. Because uh, I don't know who he represents. Because he seems like he's attacking the old gods. Uh, I don't think he works for the new gods. And so... Don't really know what's going on that with that. We'll have to wait and see what's happening on that. But guys, really like this episode. Let me know uh, if you guys like this episode. If you like uh, Laura Moon's character uh, any better. Let me know if I missed anything in this week's episode. Uh, kind of do these reviews a little bit late after the show goes off. And if you some important I missed, please feel free to give it in the comments section. We can talk about it a little bit. But anyway, guys, uh, if you like content like this, don't forget to like, 
dislike or subscribe giving you that second option <laughs> and until next time guys take care